Hey guys, a little bit unusual video from me and I don't expect it to get a lot of views but I wanted to share with you guys what I saw at the Peterson Museum. As you guys know I love American culture and American cars. Really love these hot rods, like the paint job on these is amazing. Like the video doesn't do it justice. Looks really cool and these are all flat heads which is a really interesting motor. It's a V8 motor, but as you can see, it has um, only six exhaust ports. And the flathead part of it means that there are no valves in the cylinder head. The valves are right next to the pistons and they're also upside down from what you would expect. The interesting thing about these is um, that the exhaust ports are merged. They're like Siamese in the block and that's how they come out to uh, the headers. And as you can see here, it has dual coolant lines like two on the top and two on the bottom super interesting technology to me really love how all this stuff looks and it's all built like a very very long time ago all this stuff is already built in the 70s and i'm sure it's been refreshed and stuff but still this is a really cool 1932 roadster made by chip foos i visited chip a couple times and um really been a big inspiration to me that car is so nice in real life um, i think it won america's most beautiful roadster when it was a different color definitely super nice in real life the details are crazy as same as for this machine this is um, a flathead roadster that had been in the it's also a 32 and that had been in the iron man movie that's why it has a stark plate so it's crazy to see the variation in these things like most of these roadsters are like 32s but people make so many different shapes and, and um, styles in them. It's super, super nice. Um, really, really recommend uh, going, uh, going to have a look at these things, not only at the Peterson Museum, but also at like hot rod meetings and stuff. Really nice. Like if you know how much time it takes to build a race car, imagine how much time it takes to build something like this. Like the underside of these cars is nicer than, um, <laughs> than the top of most other cars. Uh, such a labor of love uh, it's really funny that they run quick changes even in like the 45 46 right after the war when they start um, drag racing these things super super nice i really love the culture i would love to have one of these things sometimes but i think it's one of those cars that you need to build for yourself and not just buy it so um yeah i'm sure that um, a little later in life the opportunity will come and i'll uh, definitely build uh, a roadster super cool This is some stuff that's a little bit less like me, all these extravagant supercars. This is some kind of car called the Devil, but if you look closely, it's, you know, the Devil is definitely not in the details. Um, I think this is one of those things that it looks almost looks like homemade, like it looks, I don't know, it looks horrible to me. Not a, not a fan of these kinds of cars at all. I don't think they're usable. I think it's arm candy for people that never drive them and don't really know about cars and just brag about gold accents and, and other weird stuff. So not really my thing. This Mustang was kind of cool. I have no idea what it is. I think it's some Hot Wheels project kind of thing. Um, body kit is really cool on it. Uh, makes the 197 Mustang look really sick. It almost looks like a drift car inside. If you guys know what this is, let me know. And here's another, this is something I do like, uh, made in Sweden, the Koenigsegg, which is uh, an amazing supercar. This is definitely fit and finish that, that I really appreciate. I'm not a big supercar guy, but I definitely understand, um, you know, the, the craftsmanship behind this. And uh, it's definitely a company that's uh, groundbreaking with, with many of their concepts and, and of the reality of the stuff that they produce. So super cool. Maybe that's some American market thing for crashing. Let me know if you know about that. Uh, this was another one of those things. 2019 car with 2015 tires on it. Another like land speed record kind of deal. James Bond cars. I remember seeing this movie in the theaters. Uh, kind of fun how they do all this stuff. How they prep these cars. Um, Obviously, it's not really crashed. There's a fuel cell in there. It's obviously a stunt car. Uh, maybe they flipped it or something, and that's like maybe dangerous with the original tank. I don't know, but I'm always super interested in uh, in all this stuff. Um, really cool how they, um, yeah, they prepare it to to look like it's actually been shot with bullets and stuff. If you look closely, you can see it's definitely not real bullet holes, but like on on the screen, it definitely looks really really realistic. 
this is always super interesting to me this is a stunt car um, I'm not sure which Bond movie this is from I've seen them all obviously but the funny thing is that this is just a shell it looks like it's an original car but they cut the floor out um, to have these keys come out on these ramps and this is like super interesting to me uh, how this is all made um, and they make like a bunch of these cars with different things e38 of course really close to my heart I drive one as a daily super cool uh, how they have like all these missiles in here this car is super nice in the interior it's like super low mileage one of the nicest e38 interiors i've ever seen uh, very very cool uh, look at that thing like look at that leather that's crazy love i absolutely adore e38 it's one of the best cars ever made all these bond cars are here i remember that they did some kind of race in some bond movie with this um with this car um i think there's definitely a lot of sponsoring going on this is definitely a ford thing uh, Ford Cougar and uh, Ford Mustang, of course. It's a really, really well-known <laughs> scene that always makes me smile. Really cool. Um, yeah, uh, all these Bond cars. It's it's really cool to see them in real life, of course. Uh, even if you may not like the Bond movies, it's really iconic. The Lotus Esprit, of course. Every child knows this car. I had one of these things. Amazing design. They're really bad quality, but it's it's an incredible suspension design. They're very, very... Uh, impressive uh, engineering for that time it really looks like a spaceship even in the standard shape and this is a car that they used um, I think they put like a camera on the front of it or something probably um, to shoot some of the scenes with the actors like interacting so really cool I'd love to work with movies uh, someday the McLaren section the really cool thing about this particular car over here is that it was a race car that was not allowed anymore and then they turned it into a road car which is amazing like it's definitely um, a, a crazy claustrophobic car what i really like about mclaren's like this m8a is that they use a chevrolet motors um, this is actually a seven liter there are seven or 620 horsepower in one of these small cars absolutely following uh, my idea of keeping things simple um, and those motors were obviously readily available this is uh, a formula one car m10 um, also has a chevrolet v8 but a little smaller displacement they probably had rules for that this is like a five liter still makes 500 horse and it's crazy that like 50 years ago they uh, they definitely got like 500 horse out of a five liter motor without any weird stuff just itbs on it uh, probably super high compression and uh, imagine driving that thing it's crazy it's literally sitting in a bathtub with an FD Prospect motor right behind you. Crazy, crazy stuff. Um, that's another one of those really cool McLarens. Uh, I, I, keep, I keep looking at these things and imagine what they're like to drive because they've got to be light. It's just an aluminum and steel and a little bit of fiberglass with all these ITBs and that stuff's like these are like seven or eight liter motors. Um, so that's definitely uh, a motor that's like at least 700 horse really really cool um yeah like seeing these things in real life is 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 something amazing uh, the workmanship on them is really nice the paint is really nice but look at those itbs and angled so they don't interfere with each other huge length on the velocity stacks this is an m20 and these are 8.1 liters that is amazing um, over 750 horsepower in these cars uh, absolutely mind-blowing um, yeah I could look at this stuff all day really really interesting I like the cars with all the aluminum in it before it became all Kevlar and stuff um, a lot of craftsmanship in those race cars for sure Corvette is of course one of my um, favorite cars I never had one of these look at that design like imagine going to a dealership and seeing this for the first time the starsky and hutch ford absolutely iconic car i'm not a big ford guy but still look at how they set up that camera to shoot those things um i, I love seeing all that stuff the batmobile which was um, based on an impala frame and i think it had like some kind of small block um, and all the the that stuff is of course obviously fake if you take a look at that, those dash lines with like a piece of uh, aluminum angle on it uh, in the movies it looked really cool i remember when this movie came out the michael keaton batman movie i loved it as a kid really really cool uh, definitely um one of those movies that's going to stay with you forever 
and another car that you guys may not know it's from the movie baby it's a 67 impala a four-door car which is kind of weird because it's usually the coupe that's a hero car but this time it's a four-door love being here i hope you guys like the video